What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. As you can see, the electrolysis room is completed. Complete with its own uh, flux look apparently. So I chucked a cable up there. Now, it's not going to work fantastically because it's so small. It is going to get a few gases that it's probably not supposed to, both for the hydrogen and for the oxygen. But I'm not too worried because what I'm going to do, as you can see here, is actually put some vents in to allow the gases to do their various different things. The map itself is actually quite well populated with polluted oxygen anyway, so... I'm not expecting too many catastrophes, but as it stands, it's going to... We're, we're certainly better off than we was, let's put it that way. Now, the electrolysis room, as I said, is managing... Where are we going? We're going down to the beehive. I'm going to get this bees worked. I've never used them before. I read on the actual description that if you destroy the towers underneath it, it breaks it. I'm not sure why that's the thing. But apparently it is. And I have noticed now I've done it that the bees, there is actual physical bees. Uh, but you have to keep the hive running for a bit before you start seeing them. So note to you or anybody that's doing that that's not quite seen them yet. But we now have oxygen. Uh, we're also producing a hydrogen that's going to cause issues. But luckily, it's just going to float to the top right. So we're going to put some vents in the top of the base as well, allow it to vent out. And then the top of the map will just fill with hydrogen. In the future, we'll care about that if we are here long enough for it to matter. Remember, this setup is just to keep them happy. Uh, the Atmo suits are just to keep them safe. They're only here to dig, sort out, have a look at the bee process um, and the beta hives, getting as much resources as possible, specifically uranium there's a lot of, and the cobalt that we've pretty much already got. Once we've cleared out what I'm happy with, not everything, because I don't want to open it to a vacuum of space as best I can, but once we've got rid of the majority of the resources, uh, Asteroids 2 will be abandoned. Um, they will then move to another asteroid or project, depending on what is in the plan so actually having like crap tons of hydrogen all stored uh, at the top of the map i'm not expecting us it's us to be there long enough for that to matter another rocket ready to go and this one is going to the volcanic asteroid uh, which is the actual asteroid where it's got the next grade of metal that we need however it is a volcanic asteroid so I'm not sure how we would ever manage to survive there it sounds terrifying but we may give it a go rockets got oxygen it's got water plenty of oxygen actually plenty of food it's good to go this isn't the best setup for a uh, shuttle capsule type thing but we'll I will show you later on my uh, take on the best one I can build and I was quite proud of it this whole setup here needs ripping out uh, and we're going to do that now remember that I'm moving the whole space agency type thing the rocket launches and all that to the left of that main station the center there uh, so that none of the exhaust goes anywhere near the farms bit of an issue there with fertilization on the mushrooms there is a bug, and I'm not sure what it is, but you can see when I tell it it can go through walls, it works. When I tell it it can't, it doesn't. I don't know what that's about, but as it stands, all the farms are looking fresh. No warnings, even the bristle berries at the top are looking good. Sleet wheat there, nice, and the pincho peppers too. The heating and cooling loop seems to work in nicely. I expect over a period of time the heating's going to get too hot or the cooling might get too cold, but for now... It's working, so I am not going to touch it. Now, the refined carbon generators are overheating, so we do need to put a cooling loop in here as well. The whole entire asteroid is running off six of those, which is actually quite mind-blowing. Six refined generators are running my entire map. Because if you look at those, they're always running and the batteries are never draining. So what I'm going to do, actually, is turn off another two. By turning off, I mean I'll just connect two more to the automation. So that four will run all the time. And then the other 4812 will only run when the automation kicks them in along with the hydrogen ones. 
Now, I've already done this, of course, and I know that four generators is almost perfect. You see a fluctuation going up on the batteries, then down, then up, then down, then up. Uh, on the left-hand side there, just carry out. As for the comments, thank you very much. To change the um, temperature of solid items, you need to put them on metal tiles. And yes, you are correct. Thank you very much. That does work. The solid items basically transfer their temperature to the metal tile underneath, depending on what metal tile you use, of course. I'm using copper. Uh, you can then run a cooling pipe or heating pipe through the metal tile and that will interact. So obviously what I've got there is a heating pipe going through the metal tile. And that heats up the liquefactables much, much quicker. They then melt, drain through the mesh tiles to the sides of them and fall into the chamber below. Since I've put in the mod that does the auto timeout on the Atmo suits, it's a lot better. Uh, the fact that I'm not just running out of them is definitely a step forward. Having to do this still is a little bit annoying in emergencies, but to be honest, it's definitely better. I wish you could copy the setting. It doesn't actually copy the deliver suit, which is the annoying part. If you could deliver, if you could copy that set in and just do it once and spam them all, that would be wonderful. Now, I do need to get a sweeper in there to automatically uh, put the Atmos suits in for me. It's going to take a while to get the cooling loop in place. and uh, Therefore, we're going to be wasting some materials on repairing those generators. We do need to get some more satellite colonies out there. The bare minimum requirement is to get out there uh, to any of the asteroids with a concealed, yeah, that's the one, enclosed, there we go, enclosed telescope. Now, it is modded, so it does a much larger area, but it also requires more resources and more power. Specifically, it needs glass, which is something that we're not actually making, so it's quite expensive for us at the minute. Um, but we need to do that. So we're going to get one hopefully on this asteroid. Shouldn't be too difficult. We've already got plenty of people and items here. Just need to send some glass over, I would expect. Uh, get that built and see what it uncovers and travel out. And the way I'm going to do it is go to the furthest out asteroids that I possibly can and build the enclosed telescope to cover the most amount of ground. Unless, like the volcanic asteroid you'll probably find it's almost impossible to survive on that. I'm not sure yet uh, how I'm going to do that. Any tips are definitely welcome if you've done that before. My concern is that I'm going to land, uh, the temperature's going to rise, and I'm going to start melting everything I build. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything abyssalite to land on to keep us safe. It's obsidian, which, although doesn't transfer heat too fast, it still is pretty warm. In the meantime, here I am asking them to dig out some of these beehives just to see what happens, what they do, how they work, and what they produce, which we know is enriched uranium. Um, but do we want to get the rich Do we want to get the uranium? Uh, just words. Do we want to get the uranium enriched here and sent home, or is it not worth it? We'll just send the uranium home, using it to uh, improve our radbolt production. There is actually another bed there. We can send one more person over. You can see Ban He is back. Ban He is the hero of the second asteroid. Been here a couple of times, uh, at least one of them times, very close to death, but we managed to send them. Ben He, Max, Max, Rowan, and Gossman, they're making asteroid number two our biatch and getting all of the goodies from it sent home. And at the point that they are done here, they will be sent home to, I don't know, do something else. Maybe they'll get an easy job in the kitchen. Maybe they'll be sent to the other side of the galaxy to harvest more resources. Who knows? So just about to uncover this hat. Oh. I mean, we're regardless of what it's doing. That looks pretty. Uh, so that is running now, right? Yeah, seems happy. It says idle. I'm assuming now it just needs to wait. The fact that it's wobbling means it's doing something. And we do know that over a period of time with the uranium about, the bees will start to be reduced. They will then do what they do. That's the second one active. 
So we have two active. They'll start absorbing uranium, which is all around it, of course, because it was surrounded by uranium. Uh, and then, there you go, it just pooed out some enriched uranium. So the bees inside must have done that, but we will see the physical bees at a later date. In the meantime, you're just realising there's actually liquid chlorine on the floor. This, this asteroid is really cold. So that is why it is definitely beneficial and better for them now to have the ability to wear Atmo suits, which supports them down to a night negative 200 degrees, I think it is. Uh, the map, in, it, in most cases, is about negative 40, so it's not too bad. I think it's like Canada, right? Canada gets to minus 40 quite a lot. Jumping ahead to the cooling loop. It's almost complete. Almost. I don't know where that's come from. Solid oxygen. It's like... one. It's like Kelvin. I, I honestly don't know where that's come from. Whether it be a bug or something else that's happened, I'm not sure. But we'll stick a metal tile underneath it to help it uh, melt. Or at least warm up, then melt. Anyway, so you can see the loop now. The loop is going through the generators, as always, the electrostatic generators. Uh, and then into the realm of the refined carbon generators. Now, only on the bottom six, because the rest of them run very rarely. And certainly won't be running long enough to actually heat up. There is a bridge there, top left, you can see that putting in to make sure it's got a direction because it won't work that, at least having one directional thing in place. And then we'll just need to steal some water from wherever the closest water pipe is to get this up and running. There we go, a few issues with actually getting the water to go down the pipe, it was having a bit of a, I don't know, an argument with itself about which way uh, down the pipe it wanted to go. So I just chucked in another bridge at the very start. It's just off screen, but that's forced it to come down. So at the very beginning, you may not see... You will see differences in heat. I don't know if, going, if I'm going to open the heat map, but you will see it. You can see there now I have turned off the mother two, so we're running on four. And the power there is staying very, very stationary. It's looking really good. So it looks like we are currently using four refined generators to run the majority of the base. Four of which we have an additional 12. Plus we have like 15 or 20 hydrogen generators also in the winds. If we ever run out of power where the automation kicks in the other generators, I expect the batteries to fill up within seconds. Um, you can see it's not quite working, though it is pulling the heat down to the generators. So that in itself means that it is working. It will take some time, but eventually this whole area will cool down and all be quite stable. The energy using the energy being turned from heat to cold by the thermostatic generators, which is creating the electricity, is definitely more efficient than the actual refined carbon. So you will find it will all cool down. And once it stay, once it's cool, it will stay cool, and that's all we need. As long as they stay cool, they won't overheat, they won't get damaged, and they won't waste resources. And that's all we care about, right? Uh, the four generators there will stay nice and cool. The ones above will only kick in if needed. But again, like I say, it's going to be very unlikely that we're going to need that much power anytime soon. All I'm waiting for here is it to get roughly round to the end. There are gaps in there, so it's fine. And then I will break the pipe. And this will just continue to go round and round and round. Like the few hundred times I've already done this on this series. We have the rocket almost there. And this is only a recce mission, by the way. I'm not sure if I stated that. This is just going to the orbit so we get to see and can look at the asteroid and then flying home again. No chance of anybody trying to land on it yet. Uh, to do so, we'll need, I don't know, a, a lot more stuff. Likely, we'll need to get the better end metals, but that's where we're getting it from, so I'm not sure. But yeah, we're just going to have a look at what the asteroid looks like and then we can discuss. I've already mentioned that it's very, very hot, but we'll be able to see it shortly. And of course, with the magic of editing, that's now. So here it is. It's just obsidian and lava at nearly 2,000 degrees. 
Uh, I honestly don't know where, how, or what we're going to do here. Orbital cargo module. I'll click that. That will drop off all of the refined metals to allow us to have some... What do you call it? Some way of building. Uh, that platform up there on the right looks good, though, because it's actually raised up off the lava. So maybe that is a good place. Build a bridge then there across that gap, and then try and dig straight down roughly there in the center. That is a lot of capsules. I feel like that's more than I normally deliver, but I'm not sure. You can open these manually, by the way, but I have noticed a bug that you'll probably see a bit later on as well, especially with us starting to do a lot more space travel. Um, sometimes it doesn't give you the option, even if you've got a duplicate on the planet, to open them. Though if you save and reload, it does allow you to. So, note to self on that one. I always forget to take them out of their Atmos suits when I put them in the capsule as well, which means they struggle because... They can't take it off unless I force them to. So when you put somebody in a space shuttle and you launch it, click in there, tell them to drop the Atmo suit. They should only wear it if they're leaving the Atmo, if they're leaving the capsule at the destination. Else, it's just leave it off and use the oxygen that is in the capsule for them and keep them more comfortable. As you can see here, there is a backup now of salt water from the farms. So I'm going to connect that there to that main line. That will then force it to go through the desalinators to turn into clean water and salt. The reason is the, the left-hand thing, you can see it's overflowing. That's why I'm doing that. So I've got too much salt water and it's making a bit of a mess. So I'm going to force it to get cleaned uh, until it calms down a little bit. The batteries are also overheating. So, nice and simple, we're just going to chuck in a little bit of this. I'm going to extend the same loop, but the gap between is obviously going to be insulated so it won't affect it, and that will cool both of them down. Two birds, one stone. Okay, so I ripped down the rocket platforms and tidied up that central surface base. Uh, it's pretty much the same, apart from I've separated the rooms. It's got a glass roof, which does count. I, didn't, I don't know why I thought about that. Um, but to be honest... It was a waste of glass because uh, I really don't have much, if any, and I've wasted it on a fancy roof. But it doesn't matter. When we need it, I'll make some. We've got the cooling capabilities to do it, I think, so I'm not too worried. So what's actually happening here is you can see there are three rocket platforms. Now, we have... Uh, well, I have segregated them between some heat heat barriers you can see there or I will do when I get there uh, you can also see that they are in fact the improved modded rocketry expanded so there is the level one level two and level three uh, all of them are more expensive than the original it seems I think the only difference I can see is the first one is normal the second one gives you an extra port and the third one gives you extra ports a ribbon port and is indestructible for meter showers so, to be honest, I'm just going to go for the best ones to start with. All it needs is refined metals, nothing fancier, and I have plenty of all of that steel. In fact, it's for the advanced ones. And we have plenty of steel now at 60 plus tons. Each platform is going to be separated by a insulating barrier. And below them is going to be what is the same as what I've tried previously, which is the cooling setup with... The generators, the thermostatic generators. But I am going to take out the lead layer. As you can see, I'm replacing the lead layer with an additional bunker tiles. We don't want... Th this left-hand side, th th there's no people under there. No duplicates going under there, so it should be safe. And the lead just melts anyway. Of course it does, because the exhaust is like four, five, six hundred degrees. It's going to take some building. Um, and then there'll be... Quite a bit of plumbing to do as well because we need a fuel line, a oxygen line, a water line. One thing that we haven't got to yet, but we will, and it was quite cool, is that the rocket tree expanded has added a few extra engines, one of which we can already get, and it is actually better. So we are now moving away from the small fuel petroleum engine, and there is a natural gas engine, which we have loads of natural gas that we're not using other than for the cooker. And it has the same stats, really, apart from it's actually got three extra tiles in height. So it's slightly bigger, which is good. 
Um, I assume that the large petroleum engine will be an upgrade from that, but that relies on us having a lot more data banks. After that, I think the only upgrade from the large petroleum engine is the cryogenic liquid hydrogen engine, which is still exactly the same height, just faster. Now, that reasoning is not really warranted doing it. I am going to try and cryogen the hydrogen just to see if I can. But actually using it for rocket fuel, I don't see the point because it's a little bit faster. But we've already got the station there that gives us 20% increased flight speed anyway. So the command center that's in there in the dark room, the dark blue room, the light blue room there being the in and out. I may even put some more transit tubes in. I'd like to actually try and get one per rocket sort of pod. Now, I will look at these later. I've been playing around with them. I've never used them before, and I'm starting to wonder that it's a bit of a silly thing to do. Normally, I build the pipes all the way up to high up in the rocket to get to the right ports. I think these actually make it so you don't need to do that, but I've never actually tested it. So if you know, please answer. If not, we'll science it. Don't worry. But in the meantime, you can see there level one, level two, and then level three is there on the far left. However, I'm going to replace them all for the level three because indestructible, especially when we get a lot of meteor showers, is important. That input, by the way, is blowing my mind. I'm not. That's a bit out of my automation level. Um, anybody that knows what that is or what you can do with it or anything really fancy, please let me know in the comments. And we'll give it a try. But I've never really used the ribbon side of it before because the multiple bit communications is quite complicated. There you go. Ripping them out. Going to replace them for that black one there on the left, which is the top tier one made of solid steel. Indestructible, but has everything else uh, that the other ones have as well. Uh, just before we close out, back over at the second asteroid, you can see the baby bees are now being produced. You do get the ones that fly as well, but for now, they are the babies. And these are the tiny babies, as they are called. They then grow up into the ones that can actually fly around and sting you. Uh, I've not been stung yet. Actually, we've had an achievement from not being stung and collecting the enriched uranium, so that's good. You can see on this planet, I am setting up the automatic sweep system. I'm going to then figure out how deep they can go, mark that off, dig to that distance... When that is done, we are done on this asteroid, I believe. So there you can see I can make it to its maximum of 32 tiles. I will then look at where that reaches downward on the map. Uh, then tell them to dig there and no deeper. Then as they're digging, it will automatically be cleared up by this automated system. And as long as it doesn't cause lag, I'll leave it alone until they're finished and we're good to go. For now, you can see it's already running on the stuff it can reach, but there's a lot more digging to do prior to that. We are at time, though, so I'm going to end the episode here and we'll look at the fancy new rocket and rocket platforms in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, subscribe for more. Take care. Goodbye.